actually have a, I have a question that's, that's uh, I think, related to the point of view that you have when you watch a movie versus the point of view that you have when you play a game. And I think a lot of it has to do with the, uh, the process of developing a game, but um, I guess I'll ask you, John, like the, in the process of developing a game, would you say that um, many times, like specifically with Braid, would you say the development of the, the, the mechanics of the game, the, the time traveling, was that, was that the first um, thing that you sort of latched onto? And, and was that kind of the seed that from which the rest of the game grew, or? Yeah, I mean, that was the reason to do the game, but um, it's all, the idea for the whole game kind of came at once. You know, there's these little story bits, and then there's these time bits. And the influences for that actually come from a, a couple of books. There's a, this lineage of, of uh, kind of collections of short stories. Like, I don't know if you know uh, Invisible Cities by Atal Calvino. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, a classic book. And, and there were some other books that were influenced by that. And, and that sort of made its way down to Braid. Um, but really, the, the core of Braid, it's about asking a what if question and asking it differently every time. Like, what if time behaved in this way? What are the consequences of that? And then it's, the, the design process is just going into that question without, because all the games I designed before that came from top down, like, I have this great idea, I'm gonna go do, right? And Braid was the first game where it was like, I'm going to just explore. I'm gonna ask this question myself as a designer and then see what happens. And then I'm gonna sort of cultivate what happens and show it to the player, right? And maybe if some things are not that interesting, I keep those out of the game. I only keep the things that are 